today we're going to work on getting this sweatshirt fixed. And I've got my little patch glued down. I just used a little spray adhesive to put it in place. So it's covering the hole. It's not permanent, but it is covering the hole. It was so lindy, I thought I would just clean a little of that off. Mostly I'm testing this little camera. I went from that fancy camera that they got me for Mother's Day, and I went and picked up a little tiny Sony, what is it, a 405? Um, inexpensive, easy to hook up to your computer and get to film. Um, literally, it has a plug. You pull out of the handle and plug it into your computer. It doesn't have a billion features, but My stuff tends to only get a few views, so I, I'm not going to go in debt for a camera at this point in my life. Anyhow, so that's the hole covered up. And now I will take it to the sewing machine and I will go over it to lock it into place, fill that hole. And then we'll be back to move on from there. And yes, it's cold again today. I checked the thermostat. Well, not the thermostat, excuse me. The, the wall thermometer for outdoors for his weather station. It's at four degrees. That's the temperature. The wind chill is three. <laughs> it's a little chilly. The furnace is not shutting off, so I can't breathe at all. <laughs> But we'll be back. We're going to patch up the hole in this shirt, in this sweatshirt from where an embroidery design bunched it all up. Just, it looked awful. Sorry, the machine's running and I'm talking. The whole thing's going to be covered. Inside, I'll put a real soft iron on, and the outside is going to have a piece of fabric stretched all the way across, and then I'll do the embroidery on that fabric. Here is the hole all stitched up. I've stitched on the inside. And I used actually a stretch zigzag. It'll look on your screen like it's got multiple stitches and then it does the turn and multiple stitches. That is a, a stretch zigzag. got something on. Well, I'll wash it. Now we're going to trim it down close. And you just want to make sure that you don't get the shirt in it.
you see some of the old design peeking out but now what I'm going to do get this smoothed out here and nice and even and I'm gonna take my little piece I've cut down I don't I didn't really measure it I just laid the shirt out and made sure it was going to be big enough to cover that hole and go close to one side. I'm going to stitch on top and leave the ragged edge. I did that with my Scooby-Doo shirt also and I really liked the way it came out. I thought it was cute. I was going to sew some wonder un or so I'm sorry. I was going to iron put in some wonder under under it. But I really like the effect of it kind of crinkling up as it washes. The cotton kind of shrinks just a little bit and it crinkles a little bit. And I like the effect. If you're not into, you know, all that texture and I don't know. I guess it just, it looks different. Uh, then I would suggest make sure you have your shirt smooth, not stretched. Put wonder under on the back of your pattern and now it's not going to fray so you might as well just hold it under unless you make sure your wonder under doesn't go all the way to the edges it won't fray the wonder under it works like a glue and then you can peel it and press it into place just make sure you don't stretch your shirt and that should hold this into the a nice flat area So now, I need my pins. I'm just making sure that I don't get front and back of the shirt. Only want the front pinned in place. Now, you can, if you're going to embroider on this, you can embroider on this and then place it. I want the embroidery to hold on to this shirt also. Help hold that fabric into place without me eliminating the crinkle effect like a quilt does. If you've ever made a quilt or you seen a homemade quilt that when you even when you pre-shrink your fabric a little bit after it's washed and dried it'll usually pucker just slightly around all the stitches I love that effect and that's what I'm hoping to have with this I can't believe I got something on that I'm sure it'll wash out and now I put a navy blue and my top thread I didn't care what was in my bottom thread to be honest simply because it's gonna be covered and I want to the very edge is 3 8 of an inch I know this so I'm going to leave it like that I'm going to loosen my stitch up just slightly because this machine automatically puts it at 2.5 and I want I'm gonna bump it up to a three my machine automatically does the tie tack down at the beginning and the ending all I do is hit this button and it will do the tack down and then cut the threads. It's why you don't see me doing that. But you always, unless it's something you're going to remove, unless it's a basting stitch or something, you want to do a tack down. And you can do it as simple as just having it back stitch two stitches and forward stitch two stitches.
poking myself with the needles. I'm having a day. I started this yesterday and then realized I had stitched around the outer edge, not the inside, inner, <laughs> the hole. And I had to sit and pick all those stitches out. And I just got frustrated and walked away yesterday. When you're getting frustrated, it's better to just walk away. And a little back stitch. And now, that's why I had to go to a lighter machine, and this one's actually a little too heavy for me. But <laughs> I, I really like some of the things it does, so. There we go. It does have a little room for. Now, it would have been easier to put it in the embroidery hoop before sewing it on. Yes, so you may want to do it that way, especially if you're new to the embroidery machine. I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm going to put it on this way, and that way I can place by my shirt and not have to worry about I would recommend if you do your strip first, if you embroider first, make sure it's longer than you need so that if it is even just slightly off center, you have maneuverable room so it, you can get it where you're wanting it on your shirt. My picture looks awesome. My picture. My embroidery design that I made actually looks off center because it has a fairy and then the word. So I can either center it by the word or center it by the design. And I think I would rather center it by the design. I kind of like my word off just slightly. I like that effect and it's really much more common nowadays. So that will be the next part we do.